Welcome to vlog 2, skills vs capacity, speed and agility. During this vlog I will look at two athletes completing a high speed tempo run and two athletes completing an agility drill. I will highlight whether there is a skill or capacity issue which is hindering their performance and I will highlight other common mistakes during these skills and provide training drills and cues to enhance their performance. Here is athlete A performing a 100% tempo run. At toe off, athlete A demonstrates a high flared rib cage and poor knee drive. This places a greater load on the rectus femoris on the back leg to pull through. During the pre stance phase, you can see the back knee is not caught up and the studs are clearly facing the sky and so indicating excessive use of the hamstrings to flex the knee. Athlete A highlights poor knee drive which leads into the excessive use of the hamstrings. The flared rib cage highlights a stress response and so discomfort at high speeds. This leads to further stress on the biarticular function of the rectus femoris to flex at the hip and knee. In order to develop athlete A's high speed running skill, the main focus will be knee drive. To do this I will use an A skip and high knee, ru high knee running and encourage the athlete to punch the knee through. During the A skip I am looking for toes up on the leading leg, a strong knee drive and intent attacking the ground. High knee running again should emphasis on strong knee drive and attacking the ground. This is already too demanding for athlete A as you can see he flares his ribs. Athlete A clearly has poor technique during high speed running and requires a lot of cueing to encourage knee drive. As a result, athlete A has already had numerous soft tissue injuries. Athlete B struggles with lower back discomfort and right sided neural symptoms during high speed running and increased loads. This is athlete B performing a high speed tempo run. Subtle things to look at is the athlete's pre stance foot flick and excessive lumbar lordosis at ground contact. Excessive lumbar lordosis increases the load acceptance through the lower back and hamstrings due to the pelvis being an anterior tilt. As a result, the athlete complains of lower back discomfort. Athlete B uses a suboptimal movement strategy in order to generate ground reaction force. As the athlete is in anterior tilt on ground contact, the anterior core and glutes are in a poor length tension relationship and therefore the lower back and hamstrings take up the load acceptance. This, ha this highlights poor pelvic stability and therefore poor anterior core and glute strength and endurance. The first exercise to improve core strength and endurance is the plank. This anti-extension exercise will enhance the athlete's ability to hold a more optimal position this should provide the core with the necessary strength to move into more dynamic exercises. The second exercise to improve core stability is the hollow or dish. Again, this is an anti-extension exercise, however in an open chain position. This exercise can be progressed with duration or addition of weights to the extremities. However, the athlete has to maintain the belt up position. During the A match, the emphasis is on maintaining a neutral pelvis in order to encourage core stability. To do this, I cue the athlete to belt up. Then the emphasis is to explosively punch the knee through as the contralateral leg aggressively makes ground contact. This will act as a foundation exercise into further running mechanics drills while encourage core stability. Next we will look at the 5-10-5 agility drill. This involves performing a 5 meter shuttle into a 10 meter sh shuttle back across the baseline and then a final 5 meter back to the baseline. Next is athlete C performing the 5-10-5 agility drill. As you will see, athlete C takes a shuffle step before decelerating and changing direction on his right, however does not complete this on his left. He does this again whilst performing the agility drill in the opposing direction. 
This identifies a reduction in spatial awareness and timing to officially change direction on his right side. This is mostly likely due to choosing a suboptimal chapter state to combat previous injury. In field sports, it is important to be able to react and change direction efficiently. This therefore may hinder athletes' C's ability to perform optimally in a situation which requires quick change direction off the right leg. With practice and repetition of the skill and corrective exercises, Athlete Sill will develop the ability to change direction on his right hand side. The first exercise is the lateral reach drive. This exercise is to encourage the athlete into the position desired during change direction in the 5-10-5 drill to enable joint proprioception and act as a controlled exercise before moving into a more dynamic drill. The second exercise is a lateral hop and stick which will work on force acceptance, timing and spatial awareness which is very important when aiming to change direction in a small space. The final exercise is a bound stick, which will work on timing of the change direction, however with a more reactive and plyometric component. Athlete C highlights a skill issue due to previous injury and therefore utilises a suboptimal attractor state to perform a 5-10-5 drill. Athlete C requires repetitive corrective exercises to encourage more ideal attractor states. Next is athlete D, who is 28 weeks post ACL reconstruction. He has just completed four weeks of linear base running and has been newly introduced to change direction. During the 5-10-5 drill, you can see that the athlete struggles to maintain upright trunk posture and utilizes a more posterior chain dominant movement strategy. As you can see, this is exaggerated only when decelerating onto the right lower limb. This strategy heavily relies on the hip to generate force and extend out of this position. This reduces the joint torques around the knee as there will be a smaller joint moment arm from the centre of mass compared to the hip. During a single leg jump you can clearly see from the data that there is a deficit from left to right which is significant when looking at jump height and peak power which both have above 15% discrepancy. Due to this discrepancy you can see that the athlete uses a suboptimal movement strategy in order to complete the task. The video highlights a good ability to reduce stride length while decelerating. However, poor force acceptance and production uses trunk flexion to overcompensate for this. As athlete D is a professional rugby league player, the athlete requires a more upright trunk posture, which would enable him to react and track changes occurring on the sports field. In order to combat the athlete's inability to produce and accept force optimally and reduce the deficit shown left to right, it is important to work on exercises that will benefit the athlete. The first exercise is a Captain Morgan's with Swiss ball. This exercise works on loading the single leg stance with frontal plane bias, with a large focus on accepting load on the eccentric phase and then generating good force production in a vertical direction. The hop hop stick exercise encourages the athlete to accept, produce and transfer force throughout the injured limb. This exercise requires the athlete to maintain an athletic position on the landing phase as well as focus on keeping a more vertical trunk angle to reduce the reinforcement of less desirable movement strategies. In summary, skills and capacities both can be reasons to suboptimal movement strategies and performance. Both athlete A and C show a skill issue in completing their tasks and both B and D show a capacity issue in completing their tasks. Athlete B highlights a suboptimal performance in sprinting which is due to a poor core stability which causes low back pain and neural hamstring tightness. Whilst athlete D shows an inability to sufficiently accept and produce force through his previously injured right limb and so utilises a strategy to reduce torque at the knee. Both athletes need to improve their capacities in order to optimise their performance in sprinting and change direction. Athlete A highlights poor running mechanics and requires corrective drills in order to improve his performance, whilst athlete C needs to work on developing positive attractor states in order to prevent attractor states which are suboptimal.